Are you looking to perform a gene silencing project? Should you use CRISPR, RNAi, or Talens to get the job done? In this video, we'll explain how each system works and how they differ in terms of experimental setup, efficiency, off-target effects, and more. So you want to do a gene silencing project. The first question to ask yourself is, are you looking to knock out or knock down a gene? A gene knockout is when a gene has acquired a frame shift mutation, such that the cell no longer expresses any functional protein. When a double-stranded break in the DNA is created, the cell can repair it via the non-homologous end joining, or NHEJ, repair pathway. This process creates insertions or deletions that can cause a frame shift mutation that eliminates gene expression. CRISPR and talons can be used for gene knockouts. A gene knockdown is when gene expression is reduced, but not completely eliminated. This is typically done by degrading or blocking translation of the gene's mRNA transcript. Some mRNA may still escape regulation, so there is still low-level gene expression. RNAi can be used for gene knockdowns. Let's dive deeper into the different systems, starting with CRISPR. For more details about CRISPR, please visit our knowledge base that we've linked in the top right corner. In a nutshell, the basic CRISPR system has two components a single guide RNA, or sgRNA, and a Cas9 nuclease. The sgRNA forms a ribonucleoprotein with Cas9, guiding it to a specific target sequence using the 20 base pairs at its 5' prime end. Cas9 must also recognize a short sequence adjacent to the target sequence, called the PAM sequence, which differs depending on the species of Cas9. Once docked, Cas9 will create a double-stranded break in the DNA. The Talon system consists of a transcription activator-like, or Tal protein, that is fused to the FOK1 nuclease. Each of the 33 repeats in the Tal DNA binding domain can differ by two amino acids, which determines which nucleotide it will bind. By combining 12 to 31 of these repeats, a talon can be engineered to bind to a specific DNA sequence. Two talons must dimerize in order to create a double-stranded break in the DNA. For CRISPR and talons, the cell can repair the double-stranded DNA via the NHEJ repair pathway. Then, Selection must be carried out to isolate the cells with the frame shift mutation, leading to gene knockout. In the RNAi gene knockdown method, short RNAs such as siRNA are designed complementary to the target mRNA. One siRNA is loaded into the RNA-induced silencing complex, or RISC, which guides the system to bind and cleave the target mRNA resulting in gene knockdown. If binding is imperfect, mRNA translation will only be inhibited. So now that you know the basics of how CRISPR, talons, and RNAi work, let's compare ease of experimental design, efficiency, off-target effects, flexibility, and applications. Ease of design. In terms of ease of design, siRNAs are easiest, followed by sgRNAs for CRISPR, with talons being the most labor intensive. siRNAs can be designed to target almost any mRNA at any locus. The CRISPR targeting system is more restricted 
as sgRNAs must be designed for DNA sequences that are adjacent to PAM sequences. Finally, talons are also used in pairs, so there would be double the design work. Ease of experimental setup. In terms of ease of experimental setup, siRNA are also easiest, followed by CRISPR, followed by talons. siRNA need only be delivered as one transgene and utilizes the cell's host machinery to achieve detectable gene knockdown in only 24 hours. CRISPR requires the delivery of not only sgRNA, but also the Cas9 nuclease. Because of this, it may be difficult to use smaller viral expression systems such as adeno-associated viruses. Talons are even more difficult to clone, as they have larger, repetitive sequences and require double the cloning work as they must be used in pairs. Ease of experimental validation. In terms of experimental validation, different techniques are available depending on the system you use. With RNAi, you can assess gene knockdown by measuring mRNA levels using qRT-PCR and protein levels using Western blot. If mRNA levels are decreased, but protein levels remain the same, protein turnover may simply be slow. If mRNA levels remain the same, but protein levels decrease, the siRNA may be inhibiting translation rather than degrading mRNA. Experimental setup typically requires one to two days. However, an antibody for Western blot may not be available. With CRISPR and Talon systems, the percentage of edited cells can be estimated via the mismatch cleavage detection assay, or more commonly known as the surveyor assay. In this method, target DNA from the cells is amplified via PCR, then denatured and reannealed, forming hybrids between unedited and edited strands in the process. Any hybrids with mismatches are then cleaved using the surveyor, or T7E1, nuclease. Results are run on a gel to estimate the percentage of edited cells. A monoclone must then be isolated and validated using Sanger sequencing to verify the frame shift mutation, all of which add days to the project. The efficiency of each system depends on many factors, so it's difficult to directly compare RNAi, CRISPR, and talons. In general, efficiency is less important for gene knockout than for gene knockdown. A low efficiency knockout for CRISPR and talons simply means that more clones will need to be screened to find a monoclonal cell line with the gene completely silenced. A low efficiency knockdown for RNAi, however, indicates less gene repression and less pronounced phenotypes. Talons have the lowest off-target editing effects, followed by CRISPR and then RNAi. With talons, there is a low chance of another site possessing the two opposite target sites required for the two talons to bind independently. CRISPR off-target effects can be reduced when Cas9 nicase is used. Cas9 nicases are modified such that the Cas9 can only cleave one DNA strand. So two sgRNAs targeting opposite DNA strands are required to make a double-stranded cut. RNAi, on the other hand, can cause significant off-target effects. One siRNA can potentially repress hundreds of off-target mRNA transcripts, as it doesn't require strict sequence complementarity to bind. 
CRISPR is the most versatile system for gene manipulation, followed by talons and then RNAi. CRISPR can easily be adapted for gene knockdown, knockout, knock in, activation, repression, base editing, or imaging. To achieve a gene knock in, simply provide a repair template. The cell will repair the DNA break via the homology directed repair pathway using the repair template to incorporate the new sequence. By modifying the Cas9 into an enzymatically dead Cas9 that can't cut DNA and fusing it to various effector proteins, the CRISPR system can also be used to target and activate, repress, or image genes. Similarly, talons can also be fused to effector proteins to further expand its versatility. On the other hand, RNAi can only be used for gene knockdown. Finally, in terms of applications, which gene silencing method is best to use depends on the project goal. If the goal is to study a gene's function, knocking out a gene using CRISPR or talons results in a more dramatic change in phenotype versus knocking down a gene using RNAi. If, however, knocking out the gene results in cell death or reduced cell fitness, it may be more suitable to use RNAi. If the goal is to study a mutation associated with a genetic disease, CRISPR or talons are able to introduce genetic mutations, whereas RNAi cannot. If the goal is to do a high-throughput screening project, CRISPR or RNAi systems scale easily for each target sequence. On the other hand, creation of talon libraries are much more labor and cost-intensive to design and clone due to the large size of talons and their repetitive elements. There are many more specialized applications where one system is more suitable over another, and you can learn more about this by visiting our knowledge base linked below in the description. We hope this video helps you determine which system is best for your gene silencing project. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and feel free to leave your questions in the comments below.